Have we become so controlled and so ignorant about our rights that big institutions and big government can do whatever they want with us, even without our approval? I knew for certain the Founding Fathers would resist to the death what is happening in America today. Don't allow these institutions to dictate to us how we conduct our lives. This is America, and we have free choice. We the people have all the power, not the government. Government gets its power from us, not the other way around. Think of all the men and women who died in all our wars, fighting for freedom, not Federal Reserve bankers. Do you think they sacrificed their lives so that Americans can be chipped like a dog? So we could all have a homing device inside us? No. This ID card is the last step before they implant us. And that's precisely the reason nobody should accept one. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to call on the propaganda machine, the media, and try and sell this as if it were in everybody's best interest. We're working on a product that we have called internally a PLD. PLD stands for Personal Locating Device, which is an implantable GPS for which our company owns a patent. The hybrid of the two of these products, being Digital Angel and Verichip, is what we call PLD. PLD should be in prototype form by the end of this year, by December of 2002, and we are already working with the Food and Drug Administration as well as legislative agencies with these products and ultimately with the PLD. We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. After 9-11, I was really concerned um, with the security of my family. I wouldn't mind having something planted permanently in my arm that would identify me. Talk about identification papers. Watch what happens to a woman in Florida whose license was suspended. Get out of the car or I'm going to tase you. The next street off the sequence. All the power is in the people, and to the extent that government becomes alienated from the people, does things that people don't want, power is transferred until you finally come to a police state, totalitarian state, whatever word you want to give it, where the desires of the people really have no, no consequence. They go out and they vote, it doesn't make any difference which candidate they elect. Uh, I need a programmer, I work for NASA, work for ExxonMobil, work for... Um, or Department of Transportation. Mr. Curtis, are there programs that can be used to secretly fix elections? Yes. How do you know that to be the case? Because in October, Tom Feeney at the company I work for in Oviedo, Florida, that did just that. And when you say just, did just that, it would rig an election? It would flip the vote 51-49 to whoever you wanted it to go to and whichever race you wanted to win. And would that program that you designed be something that elections officials that might be on county boards of elections could detect? They'd never see it. So how would such a, such a program, a secret program that uh, fixes the election, how could it be detected? You would have to view it either in the source code or you'd have to have a receipt and then count the hard paper against the actual vote total. Other than that, you won't see it. Given the availability of such uh, vote rigging software and the testimony that has been given under oath of substantial statistical anomalies and gross dis dis differences between exit polling data 
and the actual tabulated results. Do you have an opinion whether or not Ohio election, the Ohio election, presidential election, was hacked? Yes, I would say it was. So in other words, there's absolutely no assurance whatsoever on anything with regard to these machines? Absolutely none. Anybody who trusts electronic voting machines should have their head examined. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. The new world order will be built. An end run on national sovereignty, eroding it piece by piece, will accomplish much more than the old-fashioned frontal assault, Council on Foreign Relations. We shall have world government, whether or not we like it. The only question is whether world government will be achieved by conquest or consent. Paul Warburg, Council on Foreign Relations and architect of the Federal Reserve System. There's a group that get together internationally and they sort of play God with our money. From you think that's part of what George Bush said was the one world order? They can't have a new world order uh, only with, uh, you know, a world police, a military. Right. I think the financial system ultimately is even more important than the guns. The central bankers of the world are working together to create a one world government, a global police state as sinister as anything George Orwell ever wrote about, where every person on the planet Earth will have an RFID chip implanted, where the bankers and the governments can monitor every transaction you make. A chip in everybody would be the universal monetary system par excellence uh, because there'd be no escape from it and you'd be uh, totally under the control of those who issue the electronic impulses in that chip. Their strategies are being accomplished through the World Trade Organization, the International Monetary Fund, and the Bank for International Settlements, which is the central bank for all the central banks of the world. Most people don't have a clue that these unelected private bankers actually control the governments of the world. They have financed and profited from every war since World War I without concern for humanity. The war in Iraq is an attempt by the Federal Reserve and their partner, the Bank of England, to control the Middle East and to make it a part of the New World Order. Military men are just dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns in foreign policy. Henry Kissinger, Council on Foreign Relations. Now let's listen to this quote by Robert Reich, a member of President Clinton's cabinet and one of his most trusted advisors. The dirty little secret is that both houses of Congress are irrelevant. America's domestic policy is now being run by Alan Greenspan and the Federal Reserve. America's foreign policy is now being run by the International Monetary Fund. When the president decides to go to war, he no longer needs a declaration of war from Congress. Dr. Carol Quigley, professor from Georgetown University, who was also President Clinton's mentor, said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, the powers of financial capitalism had a far-reaching aim, nothing less than to create a world system of financial control in private hands, able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole. And then President Clinton's Deputy Secretary of State, Strobe Talbot, said, in the next century, nations as we know it will be obsolete. All states will recognize a single global authority. All these supposed free trade agreements, NAFTA, GATT, CAFTA, are truly nothing more than the governments of the world and the central banks working together to create a one world government. They are not free trade. These treaties are government-managed trade, and they are destroying the American worker.